Hello everyone, Princess Alethea Contis here. I had a Skype interview with a library yesterday and we were having some technical difficulties. So I asked if they would email me the questions that they had so that I could answer them and they could actually see how ridiculous I look when I answer these types of questions. I grew up in a family of storytellers, and a lot of big things happened when I was eight. I acted in a television show on PBS. I played a little sprite named Crescent. I did a poetry assignment in class that made me just love the written word. Romancing the Stone came out at the movies, and I wanted to be like Joan Wilder. And my grandmother, Mamere, bought me for my birthday uh, it was about this thick, the unexpurgated, uh, collected fairy tales of Grimm and Anderson, and I fell in love with it. And I think all of those things together, I knew that I wanted to be a writer. I just, I just knew. Yes, it's called The Goose Girl. I love it because it's super complicated and has the best death ever. I did a fairy tale rant on it, and you can watch that on my YouTube channel. I don't, really, by and large. Um, the only title that we've come up with that actually stayed was The Wonderland Alphabet, Alice's Adventures Through the ABCs, and What She Found There. The Woodcutters should have been called Sunday, Saturday, Friday, Thursday, Wednesday. It makes sense, right? But Sunday's book was the first book, and at the time the publisher thought it was going to be the only book, so they wanted to call it something else. They were the ones who came up with Enchanted. I was like, um, guys, that's a Disney movie that's actually about fairy tales? You don't think this is going to be a little confusing? Apparently not. Alpha Oops, which you can see right here, was originally called the Telefab. Telefab is the word alphabet with all the letters mixed up, but the publisher thought that it would be difficult for librarians and booksellers to remember how to spell the title, so they came up with Alpha Oops. It took me a while to get used to it. Oh my gosh, Monday. Monday Woodcutter. Everybody wants to hear Monday Woodcutter's story, so do I. It's the last book in the Woodcutter Sisters series, and all of the awesome things are gonna happen. You really want to read that book? I really want to write it. Everything is gonna be okay. I was a kid that had a lot of anxiety about stuff. I was always afraid of things and I'm not really sure why. I was scared of trying new things. I was scared of failing. And that's the cool thing about life, is going out and failing, and then failing harder, because you need that experience. You need that experience to be a writer. What else are you going to write about? So I kind of wish that I could go back and tell myself that everything was going to be okay, just so that I might get out there a little bit more and experience some life. At first, they weren't really into it. I told my parents, you know, if this acting thing doesn't pan out, then I can just fall back on writing. And they did not think that was a very good idea. I was good at science and math. I was not actually good in English class. So they said, why don't you be a scientist and get a real job? I majored in chemistry. I've never made a dime in chemistry, but I have made money writing and acting, so... Eventually, my parents came around because when you work hard enough and just can't stop doing what you love, the good people will support you. And my parents are two of the most supportive people. I am very, very lucky. Some authors do not have families that are as supportive as mine, but they are, and I'm, I'm truly blessed. I am working on my first audiobook, which is really super cool to me because I love audiobooks. I'm super picky about audiobooks, but the ones that are good are really, really good. 
Because of this, I've always been a little intimidated to do an audiobook. So the one that I'm going to do first is Beauty and Dynamite, which is essentially my memoir. I can read this one realistically because it's literally in my voice because it's about my life. So I'm excited. I sat and did three hours of it yesterday and I'm really happy with how it turned out. So fingers crossed. We'll see. Uh, the other thing I'm working on, of course, is book four in the Woodcutter Sister series, which will be called Thiefdis. Now that title I actually get to keep because I'm publishing it myself. Yay! And Thiefdis was my very first online screen name based on my D&D &D character. That's right, gamer geek girl right here. It's based on my D&D &D character, Logan, the Queen of Thieves. I write every genre. I love every genre. I think the only thing I haven't written technically is a mystery. Mysteries involve a lot of crazy plotting and I don't really want to teach my brain how the mystery works because then I might enjoy movies and television shows less if that makes any sense to you. I write fantasy, science fiction, children's, uh, some children's is also for adults. You know, if it's a good story, you're gonna enjoy it no matter what age you are. Romance, everything I write has a little bit of romance in it. Yeah, it all comes from fairy tales. Fairy tales is kind of the origin of all the genres, horror, fantasy, uh, possibly not science fiction, but in a way science fiction is fantasy as well. Romance, fairy tales have all these things. I love it because it's kind of like making a movie with the biggest budget in the world. You don't really have any restraints. Your world can be as gigantic as you want it to be. You don't have to obey the laws of physics. You don't have to obey the laws of much. You do have to obey the human character laws, character flaws, actual human people, things that actual humans would do. So in a fantasy setting where everything else, the sky's the limit, you kind of have to concentrate on the characters. And I love writing stories about character. I love dialogue. I love getting down to the nitty gritty. So having real people in a crazy setting kind of gives you a lot of freedom to delve deep into those characters and investigate who they are and play around with that a little bit. Oh my gosh, this is such a hard question to answer because I started reading when I was three. So I'm not really sure when being a kid actually starts because three is kind of a baby age. I have no idea what my favorite books were at that time. I was three. I don't remember a heck of a lot. I will say that my favorite genre was poetry when I was a kid. I loved Ogden Nash. I loved all of the poems in Alice in Wonderland. Oh, so many great poems. I loved Gillette Burgess's The Goop Tales. The Goop Tales are fantastic. They're about these creepy little children looking things. And when they're horrible and disobey their parents, they turn into these goops, which have these giant heads and these strange hands. And the whole point is to not be a goop. I memorized a lot of poetry when I was a kid. I have a list on my website of the 21 most influential books in my life. You can look that up. Um, as far as inspiring me personally as an author, I have to give props to Orson Scott Card and Andre Norton, who were my teachers and pretty much my only teachers for writing since majored in chemistry. <laughs> the Prince's Bride, because it's amazing! Oh my gosh, if you think you love the movie and you haven't read the book, you have no idea what you're missing. It is so amazing. Seriously, just chapter one. If you make it through chapter one and you hate it, put the book down forever. You never have to read the rest. But chapter one is not even in the movie. It takes up about two minutes of the whole beginning of the movie. Her parents aren't in it. There isn't anything about the most beautiful woman in the world. Ugh, just, it's... It's brilliant. I actually have also on YouTube, I read my favorite paragraph in the world, which is in this book. 
I read that online. So if you want to check it out, go listen to that. And then, hey, if you really hate it, you don't ever have to read it. That's fine. But, oh, man, The Princess Bride. I do an incredible amount of research on a bunch of different crazy things. For instance, in Dearest, the first research I had to do was whether or not I was going to write the book about swans or geese. Both of these are very popular birds in fairy tale fiction, and I was basing it on the wild swans and the goose girl. And between those two things, I had to decide, are these brothers going to be swans or geese? So I went to my cousin, Jamie Fetterson, who is one of Florida's leading waterfowl biologists. And we did some research together and I learned about swans and how big they were and their migrating patterns and traits that they had in common with geese. Ultimately, we went in the direction of swans. I also had to do an incredible, I think I spent an entire day learning how to weave flax from nettles. I watched YouTube videos. It's, it's incredible the things that you can do and the things that I know. Making nettle tea, for instance, and that if you put a piece of lemon in the tea, the tea actually changes color. It's a pH balance acidity thing. Chemist right here. I love all these little tidbits. So that's kind of how you know you're talking to a writer is if they know a little bit about everything, including how to kill people. I am now, after 10 years, officially a full-time writer. I got there. It's a struggle, but I'm still here. <laughs> My writing schedule? I wish I had a dedicated writing schedule. I could be like Nora Roberts where I get up at 8 o'clock and I work until 5 and then I make dinner for my family and take weekends off. I wish I had a schedule like that. I don't. In part because I'm a workaholic and I love what I do. So I always want to be working. The other part is that right now, because I live in Florida during the summer, I'm trying to change my schedule around so that I'm awake at night when it's cooler and asleep in the day when it's hot. That's really hard to do. So I'm awake at strange hours and asleep at strange hours. And essentially, if I'm awake, I'm writing. And if I'm asleep, I'm not. <laughs> yes. Many authors will hem and haw and say, no, I came up with all these characters myself. And yes, I came up with the characters myself. But yes, a lot of them are based on people that I know. For instance, Monday Woodcutter is absolutely 100% based on my sister, Sherry. Sherry, at one point in time, was runner up for the Miss Vermont pageant. She is the beautiful sister and Monday's child is fair of face. I found out later Sherry was actually born on a Monday. How creepy is that? Now Monday Woodcutter went off in her own direction, but ultimately she was based on Sherry. Peter Woodcutter was based on my brother West. West is one of those people who, when he's having a hard time, will just go live in the woods for three days. That's my brother. Mama and Papa Woodcutter are so much my parents. I can't even, they're just, they're my parents. My dad is a storyteller, my mom is strict, but loves us incredibly much, and I could not do much of what I do without them, so the woodcutters would not be the woodcutters without mama and papa. Yes, the good ones know that they have characters based on them. The bad ones, why would I ever tell them? At the beginning of a book, I have an idea of where I want the story to go, obviously, but I just want to run with it for a while and get down whatever I want. I have to tell myself every single day, it's okay if you write crap, just write it. You can fix it later. So that's what I do at the beginning. I write the crap. Then when I get about halfway through the book, at that point, I really need to sit down and write down even just bullet points, what happens and what I need to write in each character's point of view because my chapters typically switch off between point of view of the girl and the guy who are the main characters in the story. Bah! 
I wish I had a good answer for this too. <laughs> Enchanted took me about five years. Alpha Oops took me about eight hours. Hero took me three months because that's all I had. Dearest, I took about a year. So with all of those in mind, I would love six months anyway to write a book. I don't like being rushed. Uh, three months came out with a great book, but I pretty much just wrote down the first thing that came to mind and moved on. I like to delve beyond that. The first thing that comes to your mind is usually the obvious thing. I like to go beyond the obvious thing and ask myself the second or third or fourth thing that comes to mind. So maybe I can surprise my audience a little bit and my stories won't be quite so predictable. I'm trying to think of books that I've written that aren't in a series. The Wonderland Alphabet is a standalone. I loved writing that. I love writing books. Any books. I love writing them. I also love coming up with worlds. My worlds are so huge that I'm thrilled to write more than one book in that world because my characters, even if my characters are alphabet characters, my worlds are so awesome that I want to tell more stories about those characters and my audience wants to read more stories about those characters. So writing a series is fun because it's kind of a win-win for everybody involved. Right now I am reading Rachel Marx's Darkness Brutal. Rachel is not just an author, she's also the cover designer for The Last Bunch of Woodcutter Books and Trickster which I so love. Oh my gosh, have you seen that cover? In a few weeks, Jude Devereaux's new book is going to come out and there are two authors that I will drop everything to read their book and those are Jude Devereaux and Sarah Addison Allen. So I'm super excited. Sarah's books normally come out in January, around there, and Jude's book, new book often comes out in the summer. So it's a nice little six month break for me and I'm super excited. Well, I kind of answered that in the previous question. All of the books of Erland beyond Dearest will be designed by Rachel Marks. Trickster, Books of Erland, Thief Dis, we're taking care of that. We have 100% control and it's so much fun. Normally the rest of the books, uh, the covers were designed by the publisher. The Wonderland Alphabet, that cover was designed by Janet Lee. Unfortunately, the cover plays a huge part in the buying process, and I know this because I used to be a buyer at the world's largest book wholesaler. We weren't the ones who had all the power over what the book covers looked like. That would be Barnes & Noble. Barnes & Noble has changed the covers of my books twice that I know of. Um, once was fine, once drove me insane. <laughs> the cover of the book is huge. There are boys who won't read the Woodcutter Sister series because there's a girl in a froofy dress on the cover, even though half the book is about the boy. Stuff like that. Book covers are hard. I wish we wouldn't judge a book by its cover, but guys, we totally do. This is not really a fair question for me to answer because I sort of love social media. I love getting out there and meeting people. I love the whole performance aspect. I know you really didn't know that about me. I'm so shy. Seriously, when the camera's not on, I kind of don't even like to answer my front door. So let's be real. I tell other authors when they ask me about social media, if you don't love it, don't be on it. It takes a lot of your time. And if you're not having fun, people can tell. I have so much fun in social media. Ultimately, it is also a promotional tool, which I'm not gonna lie, I use that as a promotional tool the smaller percentage of the time, but mostly I'm just out there to inspire people and put good things out into the universe. So if you learn one lesson from this, kids, go follow me on all the social media and you will have a good time because it's a lot of fun. I grew up at the movies and when I say that I mean that I actually had family that owned movie theaters and once I was 16 I started working in a movie theater and within a couple years became the assistant manager and promotional manager of that movie theater. So 
I know movies. I also know movie trailers. I have seen tons of them. We used to do something called trailer reels where you put together all of the trailers in like an hour long reel and then all of the employees go sit in a theater after hours and watch them all. That was so much fun. So I have a really high standard for book trailers. Unfortunately, there are a lot of bad ones. However, the good ones can be really, really awesome. So give book trailers a try. You know, if you don't like them, it doesn't mean you're not gonna like the book, but there are some super great ones out there. I will say, I have gone out and I've made my own book trailer. Enchanted had a trailer actually for the audiobook. I got copyright free pictures. I got Creative Commons license for the music. I hired my narrator for the audiobook, Katherine Kelgren, who is amazing, to read the script for the trailer. So I put all of these things together and then I learned how to use iMovie. Hi, welcome to iMovie, to edit it myself. It was a huge learning curve. Is it the best book trailer ever? No. But I love it and I'm super proud of it. So go online, go watch the Enchanted trailer. I think you'll enjoy it. Also, as an aside, I totally wanted Katie to say, in a world. But I realized that my script, being as it was a fairy tale, should probably start with Once Upon a Time. So when you hear Katie say, Once Upon a Time, think that she's actually saying, in a world because that's really what I wanted her to say. I hope I see myself right here. Really, only with more money. I'm doing what I love. I would like to keep doing what I love. That's pretty much it. My biggest tip, I swear, and I would tell to myself is don't stop writing. Don't stop writing. Don't wait for this muse. I hate the word muse. I just hate it. There is no muse, guys. There's just you. Go out and write. Do your homework. Someone asked me what was the hardest thing about writing. The hardest thing about writing is actually writing. It doesn't get easier just because I've written a lot of books, okay? It's easier to finish the book. It's easier for me to use my tools and my words to know where I'm going. But the actual sitting down and writing of it literally is like doing homework for hours and hours and hours, only you really love school, okay? Writing is hard. If you wanna be a writer, go write. It's the best thing I could tell you to do. Go write, never stop, finish what you start. There you go. I actually know the answer to this, and the answer to this is me. If you go on my YouTube channel and watch a bunch of my videos, or if you come see me at a conference and we hang out and talk for a little bit, or you see me on a panel, you will love me and you will love my books because my books are me. What you see here is what you get in my books. I write like I speak. So if you're not a fan of this, chances are you're not gonna like my books. But if you are, and if you like what I say, and you like how I present myself, you're gonna like my books. And not just one of my books, you're gonna like all of my books. That's the answer. If you like me, you like my books. And if you don't like me, that's totally okay. There are 17,000 other authors out there for you to love, go find one. Okay, I have a two part answer to this question. The first part, I wanna talk about my book that's actually called Hero. I love that my book is called Hero because it is a send up to one of my heroes, Shakespeare, who wrote a ton of really fun plays about cross-dressing individuals. And that was very much an inspiration for my book that included two very important cross-dressing individuals. The title Hero is also a send up to Shakespeare because Hero is a name of one of his characters. It's one of the girl characters in Much Ado About Nothing. So I love that Saturday is a hero, Saturday is the hero, Saturday is a girl, and it's named after a girl in Shakespeare. I, just all the layers. There were so many layers and I loved that about all of this. My heroes are girls. My heroes are brave people. My heroes are people who put good things 
out into the world. My hero is my dad, my mom, my friends, and the guy at this supermarket that helped me with my groceries. I have so many heroes. You should have a lot of heroes. People are amazing. I tell people that strangers are just best friends I haven't met yet because everyone is awesome in their own way and our goal is to pretty much find out what that is. I love you guys. Thank you so much for being so patient yesterday with the crazy Skype fail. And thanks for stopping by and watching this, what is probably going to be a super long interview on YouTube. Thanks so much for having me and have a great summer. Enjoy your reading. Bye guys.